something for this progress in these classes. Um, I got two BAs in education in English, so I work especially close with our ESL students in the class. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, terrific. Thank you. And let's see, Matt Bryant, a warm welcome to you as well. Thank you. And Matt is the new student navigator at Bellingham Technical College. And Matt, how long have you been in place now? This is week three. Week three. Excellent. And I bet you are busy working on student recruitment. Very busy, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Would you like? Is there anything you'd like to share with the group? Uh, I can say that my background is in disability support, mm -hmm. and in addition to uh, doing recruitment, advising, and career support for health IT students, I'm providing the same services for students and a few other programs here at BTC. Okay, terrific. Sounds like you have a lot of experience that will be put to good use in our grant effort. And I would also like to introduce, um, let's see, Maloney. Maloney, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Let me unmute you. Uh, Maloney. Yeah. Is, is it Maloney? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and Maloney is joining us from um, Social Policy Research Group, who is our third party evaluation, she's part of our third party evaluation team. And I'm just curious to see uh, what we do in these monthly meetings. So, um, what we have on the agenda today, last week or last month, we talked about marketing. And um, what we learned is that marketing is challenging for some colleges, and then other colleges um, have very full programs, and the bigger challenge lies in providing services for student retention. So today we have uh, coaching for student success a presentation by our own Adriana Gahn from Clark College. And Adriana, what would be best for you? Um, I can turn the controls over to you and you can click on the documents as you need them. Okay, or I, good. Or I can maintain the controls, whatever works best for you. Yeah, you can turn it over if it works. I will, I will pass the baton and just to get you launched, which document will we be looking at first? The focus uh, wheel we'll be doing or the, the main one, the preparing students for success. All yep. right. And just a, a tip, um, you'll need to, Adriana, when you scroll down on a document, it doesn't scroll on everyone else's document. So everyone has to do their own scrolling down. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. And, yeah. Uh, so here we go. Okay. Second. Hmm. Ah, there we go. You now have the power, Adriana. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, I wanted to give just a brief overview of my background with coaching. So I did most recently work at Inside Track, and I was a prospective student coach there for Rutgers University Online. It's a coaching company that does enrollment, but also enrolled student coaching. And they have found that they increase graduation rates by 15% with coaching. So it does have a positive impact on student success. And I've also worked at Central Connecticut State in the Learning Center as an academic coach. So I have other coaching experience as well. So and Adriana, I'm just going to yeah. I'm just going to jump in for one moment and say that this is the model that we mentioned that we called out in our grant that we were basing our student mm. retention services program on and the retention rates that Adriana mentioned that was based on a study of I believe it was over 13,000 students. 
So it's it's pretty it says a lot. Mm -hmm. They've done a lot of research on it. So, and what's nice is coaching is a model that you can apply to work with students, kind of in any situation. So it's it's more of a broad model that Inside Track uses. And co coaching, the philosophy of it is that it's different than counseling. So it's important to know that. Coaching is more about student responsibility and giving student choices and putting it on them. And really your job working with them is to inspire, motivate, and encourage students to reach their potential and to move forward to meet their goals and to advance. You'll see at the beginning of this worksheet that says preparing students for success, the first part says advancing. So that's really the goal of coaching is to advance. So you want to see that the student has this positive shift either in their attitude, their perspective, or motivation to act in some way. So you working with them can facilitate that positive shift forward. And there's different techniques you can do, asking questions to challenge their thinking, clarifying priorities, breaking down a goal. So there's different approaches that you can use as a coach when you work with a student to then move them forward in that way. So that would be the advancing portion of it. So what I've done for this is I've combined sort of the inside track model and geared it towards the students we work with in the health occupations so that it will be more something that you can use in a meeting for this. So if you look on the next portion, it says coaching meeting overview. In a meeting, you'll start by determining a focus of a discussion. Then you'll facilitate the discussion with the student and you're hoping to reach an outcome with the discussion at the end. So the first part, which is next, which is number one, you're determining a focus. So part of this focus is doing an assessment where you're trying to figure out what it is that the student needs. So one thing that we have through the grant already is called intake questions that were developed, asking students about school, work, different life. And that is a way that you can figure out what the best topic is to cover, is if you use those intake questions. So that's one option that you have. Another option would be to use these different topics that are under number one, which are topic areas. You can ask different aspects that kind of apply to a student as far as how are they managing their commitments? Are they able to manage their time? How is their performance in class or their grades? Do they have an understanding of their student loans and scholarships? So there are some different areas that you can focus on to try to figure out what does this student need? And one of the documents and that I have on here is called a focus wheel. So I'll bring that up on your screen. Hopefully you can see it. And for a focus wheel, this is one way to work with a student and actually have the student rank each of these categories and give it a score between 1 and 10 to show how satisfied they are with that aspect of their life. And in doing that, you would then determine maybe the lowest ones would be a good place for you to start working with a student to see what it is that you need to work on together to help reach success. So that's another option that you have. And what you're looking for when you're talking to the student is you are trying to determine gaps. So what I mean by that is you're listening closely to the student to figure out the difference between where the student is and where they want to go. So if they mention, I really want to be able to manage my time, I would like to do better on tests, you're looking for that gap that they expose to then be able to say, that would be a great area for us to work on together. You really want to manage your time and that's something that we could do. 
and that we can focus on. So you're coming up with sort of an assessment, where is the student at right now, and then you are identifying a topic that you want to focus on today. So we'll go back to the other worksheet that you have. And number two, it says identify a topic. So you want the student to participate in selecting the topic of discussion so that they're part of this discussion. So maybe asking them what makes the most sense, what is it that they need the most at this time. And for you, retention is the priority. So what is it that the student needs and what is going to help them stay in school is the main priority for that. Okay, so you should have scrolled down to see item two for that. And then I'm hoping that the second page is on here too. Oh, there's a second page that you have on this document. And the next part is about facilitating a discussion. So you want to work with a student to clarify an outcome. What does the student want to accomplish? They would like to manage their time better, but what does that mean? Does it mean they would like to create a schedule today or get out their planner and write down dates? What is it that they, they want to do in order to move forward? So you give the students some options and you let them brainstorm some options to see what works for them. Because every student is different that you're going to work with and you're going to want to try to determine what it is for them that's going to work. Maybe they've already used a planner for the last couple of years and that was not the best strategy for them. So what is it that you can come up working together to determine what is a better strategy? And then part of your role in that is then providing support. Maybe they need a referral to access a campus or a community resource. Maybe it's you providing them some techniques for study skills such as reading, note taking, or time management in the meeting and giving them tips. And then maybe it is the career coaching piece that we're also doing, which is determining does the student need help with the job search, and if so, should I help them write a resume, critique a cover letter, do a mock interview, what is it that you can do to provide that support so that you're accomplishing something in that meeting that you have with the student as well. So that was three, four, and five on the second page. And then if you scroll down, it says outcome of discussion. And there is number six, which is create an action plan. So creating an action plan has to do with next steps. So maybe in the meeting you work together to come up with a calendar, but what is the student going to do to make sure that they follow this, see if it's working for them, and determine if it's the best thing to help them with time management? And that's where SMART goals comes in. And I'm sure that a lot of you have heard of SMART goals before. A lot of different schools use them. And the SMART goal is a way to take a goal and you're making it more specific. So I actually created a meeting goal worksheet. This is posted online on the grant. And I work with the student first on determining what are their academic career and life goals, short and long term. And then we decide you know, what they want to work on first or right now. So if you scroll down, It'll show you how to break a goal down into SMART, specific, measurable, aggressive, realistic, and time-bound, so that the student leaves with a plan. So for example, if a student says that they would like to exercise more, you want to think of how can you make that more specific. So you ask them, you know, be more specific. How, 
what do you mean by that? Well, maybe the student likes to run. Okay, great. You're going to get in better shape by running. Well, we want to be able to measure that. So how often are you going to do it? Maybe the student says, I'm going to run three days a week for three miles each time. And then you want to ask the student, is this achievable? Is this something that you can do? And have the discussion around, do they have time, which goes in the realistic one as well. Can this fit in your schedule? Does this make sense for you to be able to actually take the time to run these three miles? Or do you need to do it for two days a week instead of three? So you're working with them to come up with this realistic plan and then time bound figuring out when the student will start and end and how they'll keep track. So maybe they want to start next Monday and every time they run, they're going to put a smiley face on the calendar. And then also an end time. So you want to know, okay, maybe in a month, they're going to stop and look at the calendar and see how it was working for them and reflect on that goal. And you may want to also ask the student, who will keep you accountable to this? So they might need someone to remind them. And it may even be you giving them a phone call the next Monday and seeing if they followed up with their plan. And this SMART goal can work for even something that's very simple, such as going to the financial aid office to get assistance. You could ask the student, when are you going? What time are you going? Okay, write it down and let me know that you went. So you have some follow through and you're just making sure that they're really on the same page as you and that they're okay with the plan. So again, it's putting the responsibility in the student's hand and what's gonna work for them. Instead of you just telling them you need to go do this, it's them saying, okay, I'm going to do this on this day and this time and really giving you that information on their own. And then if we go back to the preparing students for success worksheet, after you have a plan, you want to have the student articulate a way that's connecting their goals and their values to the action that they're going to take. So, you know, maybe if it was exercising, well, why is it important for you to exercise? So that they can reiterate, oh, it's really important for me to, to be healthy because I want to do well in school and if I'm not healthy, I feel like I can't focus. You're coming up with a way for them to realize there's a reason for doing something, no matter what it is. And there are some general tips that I give you down at the bottom. If you scroll down, it says general tips for working with a student. And so one is your role. And this is something that I've been thinking about because in this role, if you're a student navigator, if you're instructional support, it's thinking about what really your role is so that you can articulate that to students. So you should be able to tell them, this is what I do here at school and this is the kind of reasons you would come see me. This is how I can provide you with different types of support. So think about that for yourself on your campus because it is going to be different for everyone and what really your role is so that you can articulate that to a student if they ask. You also want to use transparency if you can and what that means is it's telling the student why you're asking a question, especially if it's a personal question or if it comes off that way. A lot of times with finances or something else, it does seem personal to the student. So maybe tell them, you know, I'm gonna ask you a question about financial aid and the reason I'm asking is because I wanna make sure that you are successful and that you are able to get through this academic year. Give them a reason about why you're bringing that question up. You may also think about narrating a meeting. And what that means is kind of explaining the process that you're going through. So this coaching process, you might say, Okay, today we came up with three or four topics that are really on your mind. Well, which one would you like to talk about? And then bringing it back later. I know we talked about time management today, but how about next time you come in, we talk about test taking, because I know you brought that up as well. So you're bringing it around and you're making it really clear for the student what it is that you're talking about in the meeting and, and what your intention is. And then check in throughout a meeting 
making sure the student is on the same page, even by saying something simple as, does that answer your question? Are you with me? Did you understand? So that you know that they understood as well. And then, as always, demonstrate active listening, just making sure the student is heard and understand and that you're truly really hearing what they're telling you. And a lot of times that is asking on your part more questions and really trying to get to the root of an issue. And sometimes it could be all connected in a way. So maybe test taking and time management are really connected because really the time management piece, if they don't have that, maybe they're not studying for the test, so they're not doing well. So you're figuring out what it is and really checking in with that so that you can make sure that you're on that same page. So I'm just going to share an example um, or a scenario of a student coming in so that you can kind of see how this model might work in that way. And then I'll let you ask questions that you might have of me as well. So let's say that Susie comes to your office and seems really overwhelmed. So she knows that she needs some kind of help, but she honestly doesn't know where to start or how you can help her. And so what you do is you're, you start by conducting that assessment. And you ask Susie about different areas of her life. Well, how are classes going? What about outside commitments? Is she also working? What else does she have going on? Is everything okay in her family life? You're trying to ask several questions so that you can see what it is that she needs and how you can help her. So maybe you find out that she's pretty overwhelmed because she has a lot going on. She's in school and she's just stressed out. And this is common with a lot of students. So then you try to work with Susie to see, well, what would she want to get out of today? How can you help her if she's stressed out? What could you do together to come up with a plan so that maybe she isn't. And so maybe she says, you know what, I want to come up with a list of ways to relax. And you say, that's great. So you facilitate a discussion around why she's stressed, maybe what's helped her out in the past so that you know, and have her write down herself ideas about what she could try now. So this is part of coaching as well, which is putting a pencil in the student's hand and saying, you take the reins, write down ideas about what do you think could help or what helped in the past. And then you're working together so that she comes up with a list maybe of different ideas that she is willing to try on her own. Maybe it's reading a book or taking a walk and you're, you're having to brainstorm these ideas about what she can do. And in your role, you're also being that support in that you're giving her resources that she needs. So maybe she needs to go to the counseling office and speak with a counselor, and that's something that you can definitely provide the information for and make a referral. And then Susie should ultimately leave the meeting feeling like she does have a plan and also knowing that you are there as a support for her and that she can come back. So you can definitely mention, you know, come back in a week or two and let me know how this went and how it worked for you and what stress management strategies you tried. And if they didn't work, we can brainstorm more ideas and maybe bring up other topics. You know what, I know we talked about this today, but next time we talk, you'd also mentioned that you wanted help with your note taking. So come in again and we can work on that so that they know that your role is also to have that follow through and to see them again. They don't have to just come in one time. And you may even possibly set up a follow-up meeting so that it's already on the calendar, sort of at the end uh, for that. So overall, this is a process that can be adapted to working with different students and in different situations. But again, it's really your role is figuring out, you know, what is it the student needs and how you can support them in that way. And what can you do today if they walk in in order to make sure that they do have some kind of a plan so they're leaving and they can reach more success in that way. So what questions do you have for me?
Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Hi, this is Jennifer, Jennifer Hipker. <laughs> Hi, Adriana. Um, I was curious. I'm sure that uh, students come to you for any number of uh, things that might be concerning them or that they need assistance with. But is there perhaps one uh, area in particular that you see them needing more assistance with than others? Like is there kind of a common one uh, or one that you see more frequently? Yeah, well, I think that most of the time what triggers them coming in is struggling in a class or maybe not doing well on a test. So there's usually a reason why they would come in. But okay. then often I find that there's more to the story and <laughs> that maybe it's the two most common ones would be procrastination, actually, so part of time management, but just kind of putting it off, and that's a huge piece, the time management, helping them come up with the schedule. And the other one is just stress, so figuring out ways for them to manage their stress, because a lot of students, it is overwhelming, especially if you haven't been in school for a while, and they come in and they go, oh my gosh, you know, there's just so much going on. So I actually have them come up with a stress management plan, and we work together in that way. So Great. those were the two most common ones. But often, Great. you know, it's triggered by I didn't do well on a test, and then we could also talk about, well, let's talk about test-taking strategies or, or something like that. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Adriana, this is Andy. Hi, Andy. Um, commonly, when I've met with students, because I worked in career services a lot, they were mm -hmm. stressing because of, you know, they they were running out of money or they were, you know, mm -hmm. something changed at home and they needed a job. And when you talk to them, more things come up. So how would you handle situations like, you know, this is a daycare issue, a money issue, a, I might have to drop out of school issue? Yeah, so I actually have a long list of resources that I've researched for the community and the college. And so I would just say, okay, what's the most pressing one? Maybe it's daycare. And I have had a student already say that. So, yes, I mean, you're right. A lot of times it's life. It may not be academics. It may be the life. And for that, it's figuring it out. Okay, what can they think of? So again, you want to give them the resource first and say, like on our campus, we have a child care center. So I'd give them that information first. Mm -hmm. But then I would talk to them about, you know, what is the issue with child care? Is it the scheduling of your classes? Is there someone in your family that can help out? And helping them brainstorm. Maybe they need three backup plans because their babysitter always cancels, and that's really the issue. So it's true, you're trying to dig in as far as you can to get the root of the issue, and then giving them as many resources as possible to try to have them figure it out. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're there to support and give them the resource, but they have to take the action. So it's also inspiring them and motivating them to go out there themselves and go to the daycare center. And maybe even on campus, a lot of times you have to walk the student right over there so that they'll do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> like finding a way that they're going to do this and and making sure. So yeah, so you're right. So I think in this role, we do academic coaching, we do life coaching, and we do career coaching. So there's a lot of different aspects because a student could come see us for any reason and we should be able to support them. So we do need to have a lot of information and resources on hand to be able to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Adriana? Adriana, thank you so much. Uh, I, I was thrilled to hear that you had actually worked for Inside Track okay. and had the Inside Track on their model. Um, and I think what I, one thing I find intriguing about this model is that it, it looks like it borrows heavily from business. Um, mm. There is a substantial amount of evidence in organizational management and business literature that shows the value of effective goal setting in mm. terms of uh, productivity and accomplishment. So it, it makes sense that this would translate well to individuals. So thanks so much for sharing that information. 
You are very welcome. And if anyone needs additional resources, feel free to email me as well, and I'll send you information. Great. And I'm just going to take the controls back here. Okay. So last time um, we talked about marketing. Um, however, because of vacations, uh, some of you were unable to attend. So I just wanted to touch on that briefly. If anybody has um, a successful strategy that they've realized was successful over the last few weeks, if you could share it, that would be great, I including any social media um, strategies or tactics. Um, I've had a little, this is Andy, um, I've had some success on using LinkedIn. I joined many different groups. Ours is, we're kind of targeting, you know, people with after an AA degree level and IT experience and some healthcare, so it's a very narrow little group. But some joining some specific LinkedIn groups um, and posting our um, classes there has been somewhat successful, and we've had some interest from peripheral people who are interested in our graduates, although we don't have any right now. Um, but some of that has been successful. And actually, I saw the next thing on the agenda. Uh, contacting Caitlin gave us some excellent resources in the community that we were able to contact as well. Thank you, Andy. Um, actually, I'm curious to know if you could type in your chat window um, yes or no if you have been in touch with Caitlin. Matt, you mean in the three weeks you've been here, you haven't yet? <laughs> yes. Um, and let's see. Be sure you you select everyone when you type into the chat box. It looks like um, only a couple people have been in contact. I would strongly encourage you to get in touch with Caitlin because she can put you in front of TAA eligible student audiences and those students come with the mother load of funding. TAA will fund up to two years of study. So um, that's a good source and I know there were, were recently layoffs from Boeing and other large companies in the area. So uh, and it, it, if you no longer have her contact information or, or something like that, just let me know and I'd be happy to put you in touch. And Adriana, you've reached out to her, okay, and you're just waiting for a date from her to set up a visit. Great. Um, and Beth, you've been in touch with people in the VA who also work with TAA people. That's a, wow, two birds with one stone. That's quite excellent. And Beth, how did you find that that intersection? Staff who work with both um, work in the VA but with TAA people. Do you want to unmute your mic? I think it is unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, mostly through the workforce centers. Um, there's about uh, four counties not in Northern Virginia in this area, and we've been in touch with most of those counties, um, and they have people who are working with the TA. When I put VA, I meant Virginia, not uh, veterans, but we've also oh. contacted those people through veterans, too. So okay. <laughs> I have done both. <laughs> I was all excited because I thought, wow, this is a new <laughs> twist. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we've had more success with veterans programs than we have with TAA. I don't think we have as many TAA people here as uh -huh. um, as we do veterans. And it's pretty dependent on what type of layoffs have occurred. Uh, you know, sometimes the, the pool of TAA eligible participants doesn't line up with the programs you're off offering, and sometimes it does. Right. But 
Thank you, Beth. And, you know, I also wanted to reintroduce Jennifer Hemker because we had a small attendance last week. And Jennifer Hemker is um, our new instructional support specialist here at Bellevue <laughs> College. Hello, everyone. And Rob, do you have Mary with you? Rob from Spokane? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, I'm here with Mary Eubler. In fact, she's sitting in the seat, so if you uh, take a look, you'll see her. And uh, she's been working now for, mm -hmm. what, two weeks? Two weeks today, yeah. Two weeks today. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, and sorry, Rob, Mary we don't, we don't see a camera, Rob, just so you know. Your I'll camera's not that. on. Click on the camera. Ah, uh, now it's on. Um, we're still not seeing it. You also need to click, ah, there we go, Mary. <laughs> yeah, so I've been here for two weeks, um, just getting my feet wet. I previously came from the state of Oregon, and then prior to that I was with uh, Sheila Packard for 20 years as in training and development. Terrific. I know Rob is very excited to have you. Part, as part of his team. So a warm welcome to you, Mary. Thank you. And I apologize for the confusion. I didn't realize that this was the same meeting that Rob asked me to attend with him. So. Ah, okay. No worries. All right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So we add to every meeting a what's on your mind section where you can share resources, tools, best practices, questions, challenges, successes, anything that's on your mind about any any aspect of student support services. Does anybody have something they'd like to share? What's your, I, I'm curious, what is your biggest challenge right now? If everyone could type into the chat box and be sure everyone is selected in the drop down. Admin. Matt, can you tell us a little more about that? I'm going to unmute your mic. <laughs> Well, since my supervisor's not on the call, um, now, <laughs> you know, we've just recently encountered a, a roadblock with several of our programs feeding into the um, entry-level IT courses that we've planned into our health IT sequence. So we're uh -huh. currently working on having additional sections for those courses so that we can continue to recruit health IT students because as it is, they wouldn't be able to get into the proper courses for the sequence. But I we're see. working hard on addressing this issue and I hope to uh, restart my recruitment efforts next week when I know for sure that we will have more slots. Great, and I think we all bump up, we all work in, um, large bureaucracies, and I don't think there is a single one of us who doesn't run into a certain amount of administrative problems. It, it takes uh, a lot of persistence sometimes to overcome those hurdles. Adriana, access. Access to what? Oh, access uh, the program because of tracking student data in notes. I'm used to using more of an online database. Oh, and access is okay. not very user friendly, so I've been running into a lot of glitches and it's going to be difficult. Right now I have a small group of students, but I'll have 400 by the end of my grant, so I want to make sure I really have it streamlined, but I keep running into problems every time I try to work with it. So I see. So, and just to clarify, access the, the database tool. Database, yep. But that's yep. just this week. <laughs> okay. <Yep. laughs> Thank you. 
And Beth, that's an interesting one. Finding employment for people without health or IT experience who want to go into health IT. Yeah. Um, I know Andy can feel your pain on that one. And what we do is we try to actively discourage people who we know will not be able to get employment at the end if they come in without any experience in health or IT because it's the chances are just so slim that employers will hire them. So I don't know if you want to say anything more about that, Beth. Well, the frustration has been that because we've promoted this with the workforce centers in the area, especially with, with veterans who are unemployed, mm -hmm. it looks good in the media that there's going to be all these jobs in health IT, so then they pass mm -hmm. them our way, and then I have to say to them, do you have a background in accounting? You'd probably be better off staying in accounting. So yeah. it's just frustrating because they come feeling like, oh, good, this will be great. There will be jobs. I'll make lots of money. And then I have to say yeah. a year certificate program at NOVA is not going to get you a high-paying job like accounting will, you know, if that's already a field that you've invested in. So it's just a frustrating, discouraging people who are being sent to us is, is frustrating Yeah. To me. That that would be, and you feel kind of like the person who's raining on everyone's parade. Yeah, yeah that's a tough one. Um, and Jennifer, you have some empathy, Adriana, from Jennifer regarding access. Uh, and Andy, recruiting students who meet the requirements for our data analytics program. Yeah, we have a, a fairly high bar on that one. So. It's tough to find people who meet all of the qualifications or who don't have to take six months of prereqs to get into the program. Ashley, student behavioral issues. Let's unmute you. Am I muted? I don't think I am. Oh, you're not muted. You I'm are. Sorry. My stuff keeps going in and out. I'm on a kind of funky computer, but it shows it's working on my end. It is. We can hear you. Okay. So, do you want to say a little bit more about the student behavioral issues? Um, yeah, I can. We, we don't have much of a, a screening or requirement for our students in the MA program, so we pull from a lot of different ages, different social groups, um, different you know ethnic groups, and so we have a, a very eclectic group of students who come in, and some of them have never dealt with um, you know classroom environments and protocols and. Uh -huh. how to interact with teachers and certain levels of respect. And so our biggest challenge this past quarter um, with this group of students has just been maintaining classroom management. Uh, and wow. who come through technical colleges sometimes feel like, you know, they're paying for their education, so they want more input when uh -huh. that can't always be the case. Um, and yeah. so I deal with a lot of that as an instructional support team <laughs> and kind of the middle between instructors and students. And so that's been huh. something I've been working on a lot and uh preparing students for what it will be like when the other mm -hmm. end is a doctor instead of a teacher and how they need to treat those individuals and practice that here in the classroom. That's interesting that you need to inculcate social skills in addition to uh academic skills. Hmm. Well, being a medical assistant requires almost as much social skills as yeah. learning skills. Um, Clearly. That's something that's not always on a syllabus. And so. Right. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you all. And any, if anyone would like to comment on anything anyone said, feel free. Well, now that we've shared biggest headaches, anybody have something that they've done recently that has been really successful, that made you feel really pleased? We can always hope for next month. 
So we don't have topics scheduled for our September and October meetings, and I would love to get your input on what topics you'd like to see covered, because this is really your meeting. So what would be what would be helpful to you all in terms of topics? Uh, Margaret, this is Andy. Um, yeah. One thing I think would be, I know this for um, veterans and I'm sure many populations, that the first couple quarters for a lot of students is that they haven't been in a while are really the quarters where a lot of drops happen. So mm -hmm. getting people in, you know, finding them support and um, helping them be successful right away is is really important. So any, um, that'd be just a good topic. Helping students succeed right off the bat might be a topic. Okay. I'm just taking notes here. And this is Adriana, and I know last time I had mentioned that at some point in next academic year, I think it'd be helpful to talk about the career aspect of our position. Uh -huh. I just, I'm curious, I just want to hear what everyone's doing because I've been doing a lot of development work for that, but I want to just get ideas from other people as well. I'm just curious, so be interesting. Okay. Too. And something I wanted to let you all know is that we are in the process of hiring for um, a person who will be student services lead for the whole consortium, and one of their roles will be um, employment also. So doing outreach with employers on behalf of the whole consortium. Oh, great. So we're looking for, we should have that person in place sometime in October. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, oh, and Beth uh, said that Andy mentioned groups uh, that he's joined on LinkedIn. And actually, I'm wondering if there would be an interest in social media in general. Um, Andy's had a lot of success I think, Andy, <laughs> over uh, using LinkedIn both for student recruitment and then in the future um, for student employment. I know in our last grant we, we had someone in a navigator role who was very uh, social media savvy and she had a lot of success with social media. Okay, so looks like, and Beth, are you following anybody on Twitter? Yes, and we don't have our Twitter person on, on this call um, today, the person who manages Twitter, but we've gained quite a bit of traction over the last month on Twitter. Um, so it looks like a couple of people would like to cover social media. Well, thank you, Adriana, for your Twitter handle. Um, We have him on video. <laughs> Jennifer, are you saying we can see Roger in the background? Um, Actually, so, he just up and left. <laughs> oh, I see. He must have known I was uh, going to refer to him. Uh, our social media lead um, shares an office with Jennifer. Uh, so it looks like a couple of you would like to see social media covered. Um, can you type in yes if if that sounds good to you? So that would be primarily LinkedIn and Twitter. Okay. Okay, great. Maybe we will look at that for September then. And if you could think about other topics um, for October, and also I am looking for a facilitator for September and a facilitator for October. Do we have any volunteers? And I'm, I'm happy to help with, with any aspect and get things set up. No volunteers? All right, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer for October, thank you. Anyone else for September? Well, I'll send out an email and give one more pitch for September. Um, I may, I, 
I don't like to resort to assigning, but I may, I may need to if no willing volunteers come forward. Um, and I also were, we only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to remind you of some resources um, that we have for student services on our HIT education site. And I am going to turn over the controls to Jennifer, who can show you an example. And both Jennifer and Adriana have been very actively populating this site with resources. So I hope we'll all um, be contributing to this site. And if you have something to contribute, just send it my way, and I'll see that it gets put up on the site. Because that way, we won't have people reinventing the wheel. OK, Jennifer, you have control now. And you just go up to the top of your screen, share desktop, and off we go. Hmm. Let me just pop in her office. That's what it is. Hang on. There we go. Better? Ah, there we go, Jennifer. Okay. You can hear me now. Okay. Yes. Um, I should probably be including all of the navigators probably in my communications as well about the um, where we are storing all these documents. Um, ours, we're primarily putting them under the student support um, since that's my role here. Um, but any bulking up of the resources that we can all share would be beneficial to all. Um, so I can start including the navigators in communications as well. Um, but from the uh, support standpoint, um, I've been working to add documents in the various areas that students may need assistance with um, so that we can have kind of a library of references, if you will. Um, through the HIT education website. Um, underneath the student coaching folders, um, there delineates different, different uh, topics, uh, so uh, uh, additional folders within the student coaching topic. And then and this Jennifer, uh -huh. I'm sorry, can I ask you to show, show how you got here on the oh, HIT sure. education um, site so that people can see? Oof. Um, you know what, I actually use a link that uh, was given to me previously. Oh, OK. Because <laughs> it's not easy, actually, to um, navigate there. But I can show you an example of, OK. Does everybody see this? Um, can you see my the student support services? OK. Um, so he, this is the uh, website I was referring to. And as you can see, it's for both navigators and uh, support services, and it says support services here. Um, and then there's recruitment student under student coaching. And, mm -hmm. and Jennifer, could I ask you to scroll up um, and under HEW, just hover over HEW co grantee resources? Okay. Up at the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and you'll see at the very bottom of that list student support services. So that's how that's how you get here. Okay. And Sorry, I won't interrupt you anymore. <laughs> um, so this, if you open the student coaching folder, here are all the documents thus far under each category um, that students may potentially need assistance with. And just to give an example of one of these documents, I have right here, oh, actually it's this one. Um, this is just one I created um, based off of what was said from a Stanford entrepreneur on um, his tips. Um, he was a, an aeronautical and astronautical like engineer at Stanford. Um, so he had a full plate and had some really wonderful tips for students for time management that I thought were kind of unique from what I've seen out there on the web. Uh, hence, I received his um, permission to kind of um, 
distribute his tips. Um, so this is a resource that is in one of those folders, just as an example, um, but something I had been thinking of lately and contemplating, rather than just handing students um, resources that they may or may not read on their own, I tend to go over them with them in person anyways to see how applicable they could be or if the students have actually done any of these tips or um, tried any of them um, prior and what has worked for them, what hasn't. But I also want to create some handouts that are more interactive. For example, um, here's one I'm working on with the um, goal setting. This one pertains to goal setting. And just um, as Adriana mentioned, you want to put the, the ball in their court and have the students really lead and take an active role um, in your meetings with them. And you want them to follow through is the main. Um, so this would be just an example of a worksheet that would be a little bit more interactive that you could sit down with them and have them complete or complete with them and, and go through it. And, I really like that pie chart that she showed as well because they can actually write down numbers and I think any form um, that can get them uh, participating I think would be a little bit more um, effective rather than simply handing them sheets of information. So I'm working on doing a good col um, collection of both informational and um, interaction um, based um, handouts. I guess is what I have going right now. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the top of the hour. And I just wanted to thank everybody for their active participation today and for your time. And have an excellent afternoon. We'll look forward to seeing you online next month. Take care. Bye.